through is a case study on salary deferral or deferred compensation. So uh, we're gonna I'm gonna go through sports examples, but these plans are utilized in big Fortune 500 companies across uh, the country. So Bobby Bonilla, uh, some of you may have heard of him. Uh, he was a player for the New York Mets. So the Mets owed him $5.9 million for the 2000 season. And they had enough of them. They no longer wanted him, but the money was guaranteed. So the club negotiated with his agent to attach an 8% interest rate to the unpaid compensation. So the deferred compensation plan, the $5.9 million uh, earned 8%. And this meant that Bonilla was due $1.19 million each year for 25 yearly payments. So 25 payments of $1.19 million starting July 1st, 2011. So he waited uh, 11 10 to 11 years until he started receiving the income because he didn't need it then and he wanted to let it grow. So he's still getting this money, right? So the clock started in the year 2000. He's going to end up getting $29.8 million in total uh, up until July 1st, 2036. So each year you may see the stories, they still call it Bobby Bonilla Day. So was this a good deal for Bonilla or for the Mets? Well, for the Mets, um, the reason they were willing to put a high rate of 8% into this plan was because they were getting 12% on their money from Bernie Madoff. That's why they were willing to go high. Uh, for Bonilla, let's look at how good a deal this was. So by deferring the income, Bonilla did not pay income tax on the $5.9 million in the year 2000. So it would have been 46%. So the instead of paying taxes then, the 1.19 million annuity payments, the ones that he gets each year now, these are taxed as ordinary income. So if Bobby Bonilla took the $5.9 million of income in 2000 and made $3.18 million after tax, all right, the case study I have students do is look at what rate of return would he need to earn on his money to generate the same income streams from 2011 to 2035 that he was getting from his contract. Right now, that was right. They gave him uh, 8% was the interest rate built in. Here's the for Bobby, he would have had to earn 14% on his money each and every year because that 3.2 million, when that earned money, it would be taxable. So each year, the money he would earn would have to pay taxes and that would slow the growth. So to achieve that 8% return after tax, he would have to make 14%. Huge difference. So I I realized I could apply that strategy today um, on a timely story. So does anyone uh, recognize this picture? Yeah. Anyone say it? Eric Armstead. Correct. Letters. Eric Armstead posted a picture of his paycheck a couple weeks ago. He wanted to illustrate that half his money went to taxes. So a few things I'll point out on here. So what I was glad to see was uh, you see that better? He, he is putting money away in his 401k, right? I was glad to see that. Um, out of 4.1 million in income, he only kept 2.1. So he really paid half of his income in taxes. But here's the other thing. He was trying to downplay his income because he actually showed a paycheck from March. He didn't want to, he didn't really want people to focus on how much money he makes. 
because this year he's actually going to make $16.7 million. So if I were him, I would look at my 2024 compensation and try to work out a deal with the San Francisco 49ers for a deferred compensation plan. So what if instead of taking $10 million of salary in 2024, he decided to defer it for 10 years, right? So on the left side here, I show a 10-year salary deferral, but then he takes out the full amount. So in year 10, you'd have $17 million of pre-tax income. So after paying taxes, he would get about $8.6 million in 2034. By comparison, if he takes the $10 million of income, he's only going to have $4.97 million after tax. Now, when you invest this money in a taxable account, you have to pay taxes. So instead of a 5% return that an annuity would get he's only going to earn about three percent after tax and uh that's going to be uh very uh realistic if he doesn't take any money for 10 years he will end up with 6.9 million dollars so if he deferred his income for 10 years and didn't decided not to touch it because that's the downside you can't touch it he would end up with an extra $1.7 million after tax. Now let's make it look a little better. Not changing assumptions, but, or major uh, rate assumptions, but what if instead of taking a 10 year lump sum distribution in 2035, he turned it into 10 annuity payments of $2.2 million? That's taxable but your tax rate will be lower because your income's lower. And so he'd end up with uh, just under $12 million after tax. Doing the apples to apples comparison, if he invested 4.97 million and earned the 3% after tax, uh, he would not get the full annuity payments and he'd run out of money in 2041 and he'd only end up with $7.7 .7 million. So he would end up $4.2 million after tax, better off if he deferred the income. Stretch it out one more time, because this only gets him to age 50. What if he stretched it into 20 years of distributions? Now that's $1.37 million per year. Now he gets money all income all the way to age 60 and he's going to get $15.2 million. The apples to apples comparison of getting your tax and then investing at 3% is only going to clear $8.1 million. So over the total 30 years, he's $7 million after tax, better off if he can defer that income for 10 years. So 